Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Reverend Moon? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, then I'll move to my analysis. Sun Myung Moon was born in Korea on January 6, 1920. At this time, Korea was under Japanese rule. Sometime around 1930, Moon's family converted from Confucianism to Christianity. Moon claimed that on Easter Sunday in 1936, when he was 16 years old, Jesus appeared to him and gave him a special mission on earth. Moon was anointed to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth, he believed that he needed to travel to other countries and proclaim the greatness of the Korean people. In the early 1940s, Moon became active with the Korean independence movement and studied electrical engineering in college. He married in 1945. He and his wife would be married for seven years. After World War II, Korea was divided into two entities, which would become known as North and South Korea. In 1947, Moon was convicted by the North Korean government as a spy for South Korea. He was sentenced to five years in prison, but escaped in 1950 during the Korean War after U.S. forces bombed the prison. By this point, Moon was no longer a fan of communism and believed that the war between democracy and communism was the same as the war between God and Satan. Moon founded his own church in 1954. He called it the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. Later, it was simply referred to as the Unification Church. Moon believed that Jesus did not finish his work on earth. Jesus failed to purify mankind because he was crucified before being able to marry and have children. Moon believed that Jesus anointed him to complete the job. Moon was to restore humankind to a state of perfection and to become a parent to all humanity. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. For one thing, if he bailed out, his child support payments would be staggering. Moon started several businesses to support the church, including manufacturing tools, machine parts, and weapons. In 1957, he published the Exposition of the Divine Principle. This was the doctrine for his church. His followers, which many people referred to as Moonies, treated the divine principle as Holy Scripture. It's worth noting that sometimes Moonies is thought of as a derogatory term, but members of the church actually have used this term to refer to themselves. So it seems like it has been adopted both inside and outside of that church. Moon married again in 1960. In total, Moon had 16 children, 13 of them with his wife. As I mentioned, Moon was married before this. He may have been married additional times between these two marriages, but his 1960 marriage was his last one. Moon and his wife referred to themselves as the true parents, which is consistent with this theory that they were finishing the work of Jesus. The couple believed that as the true parents, they were to connect married couples to God. Moon started conducting mass weddings, which is like a less rational version of mass hysteria. The first mass wedding was in 1961, it involved 36 couples. In 1982, 2,075 couples took part in a mass wedding in Madison Square Garden in New York City. Moon would go on to marry tens of thousands of people in these ceremonies over the next several years. Moon moved to the United States in 1971, although he remained a citizen of South Korea. In 1976, Moon said that his dream was to conquer the entire world. In 1981, Moon was indicted for tax fraud and conspiracy to obstruct justice. He was convicted in 1982. An 18-month prison sentence meant that Moon was going to have to wait to conquer the world. He served 13 months. Moon tried to argue that he was discriminated against by the jury based on his religious beliefs. Many religious leaders supported Moon, including Jerry Falwell. The same year he went to prison, Moon started a conservative newspaper called the Washington Times. When Moon was released from prison, he started referring to himself as humanity's Messiah. In 1992, 
he tried to remove all doubt that he wasn't the Messiah by officially awarding himself the title of Messiah. He was not successful, but he did remove all doubt that he was credible, so at least he achieved something. Moon spent several years trying to get involved in many different world events, like preventing war between North and South Korea. He spent time hanging out with politicians and celebrities. One could argue that Moon was trying to align with the stars. Moon was involved in many business ventures throughout his life, including hospitals, schools, newspapers, construction, a professional soccer team, beverages, ski resorts, pharmaceuticals, auto parts, commercial fishing, and real estate. Moon died on September 3, 2012, after suffering complications from pneumonia. He was 92 years old. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one is Moon's belief system. Moon's special mission started in 1936, when he claimed he had a conversation with Jesus. Here's what Moon said happened in this conversation. Jesus told Moon that he came to earth as a human being, not to die, but rather to find the perfect bride. The plan was to create the true family. The crucifixion disrupted this plan, so Jesus asked Moon to complete the mission. Moon developed a series of beliefs after this encounter. For example, Moon believed he was the Messiah, he was sinless, he was the true father of mankind, his job was to liberate the universe, the Hallelujah Chorus was really about him, and people in heaven would eventually sing praises to him. Moon expanded on his belief system years later when he was sentenced to prison. Moon claimed that his time in prison was equivalent to the death of Jesus. Therefore, when he was released, it was like the resurrection. This is why he publicly declared himself to be the Messiah. Item number two. Initially, Moon was a big fan of the United States. He saw it as the world's salvation. But after going to prison in the U.S. and suffering financial losses in his businesses, he changed his mind. Now he viewed the United States as Satan's harvest, a repository of immorality. Item number three. Moon's controversial activities extended far beyond tax evasion. He was frequently in battles with officials about tax-exempt status for his church. He was involved in several lawsuits over how he acquired property, solicited funds, and recruited followers. Moon was accused of using his massive wealth to purchase political influence. Item number four. The mass weddings were a key part of Moon's belief system. He played an active role in matching the men and women who he married in the mass weddings. He did this based on photographs and questionnaires. Moon rejected the idea of romantic love. Being happy was not the objective of getting married. Many of the couples had only met a few weeks earlier, and some did not speak the same language. Item number five, Moon claimed that his church had three million members worldwide at its peak, in reality, the membership was closer to 50,000. In the United States, there were only a few thousand members. His church did not spread nearly as much as he represented. Item number six, some people believe that Moon was a cult leader. There's a great deal of evidence supporting this. A few examples. He forced the Moonies to recognize him as the Messiah. They had to pay money because of their human sinfulness. Followers of the church who were responsible for raising money had to raise a minimum amount each day and were not allowed to sleep if they didn't accomplish their goal. Moon was fascinated with sex, which is similar to almost every other cult leader. The church used aggressive conversion methods, which were based on deception. One recruitment method involved followers inviting people to a community workshop. The visitors would be encouraged and flattered during that event they would be asked to come to another meeting. This meeting would last a week. It involved isolation and hours of lecturing. The visitor would be pressured into becoming a Mooney. At least 400 Moonies were kidnapped by family members to undergo deprogramming. Item number seven, Moon claimed that his church was a version of Christianity, and he was accepted and supported by quite a few Christians throughout the years. Many Christians, however, rejected Moon and his church, mostly because Moon wasn't actually a Christian. His belief system deviated quite a bit from Christianity. For example, Moon thought that he was the Messiah, and he claimed the divine principle, a doctrine that he wrote, was a holy scripture. 
to Moon, it was a replacement for the Bible. Now moving to my final thoughts. Moon appeared to be suffering from a number of delusions, yet was highly functional in many other ways. For example, he ran a number of businesses. Moon wasn't actually that good at business. He struggled financially much of the time and depended on donors for a lot of his income. Moon was not charismatic. He wasn't talkative. Life as a Moony was very difficult. It's not really clear why so many people were drawn to him. Perhaps he was successful because he maintained the appearance of success. I guess it proves that one way to become a cult leader is to be wealthy, narcissistic, and claim to be the Messiah. Charisma is not required. Those are my thoughts on Reverend Moon. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis on this topic to be as intriguing as a multi-billion dollar child support bill. Thanks for watching.